One more time, we greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we welcome you for this morning, wonderful day, the Lord's Day and for this uh, great service. And those who are watching online, we bless you and may the Lord speak to you, empower you this morning that the uh, uh, Lord would impart everyone who is listening to this word. May, may pray the Lord that the Lord would uh, speak the meaning of this word this morning unto your life. Amen. And uh, death is not an end of the life. Death is an entry to the other part of life. Death is a veil between the eternity and the world you are living. In other words, when you death is like entering into another door. And once the death comes at our place, at our life, you got to enter into another life whether you understand or not, whether you know it or not, whether you agree it or not, all these things happen because you got to enter into that. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And death cannot be stopped. Can anybody stop death here? Okay. But can at least anybody postpone that place? Hey, death. I'm not ready. Just come maybe next week. Can you? All right. Death you cannot postpone. You cannot delay. You cannot stop. You cannot have any power. So what do you have to do with the death? Channel point. What do you have to do with the death? You have to prepare. Only thing for death is, only you have to prepare for death. Nothing else you could do with the death. Amen. Hallelujah. You get me what I'm saying? Nothing else you can do with the death. Only preparation. So now, let me go. Will that speak? For that to answer, I tell you this. A person, when he has got a life, has got one life on the face of the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Only one life. The minute he finishes his life, when he steps into the eternity. What, what do you mean by eternity? What is that? Is it heaven? Or hell? What do you mean eternity? What is eternity? What, what is that? Come on, let's let's be casual. Forever. 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 Yeah, that's right. Eternity is not heaven. Eternity means forever you live. Where you live is a question mark. Amen. Hallelujah. This is where I'm coming to now. See, we are so used to preaching blessing, blessing, blessing. You miss the whole life of your life. Let me tell you very candidly, very clearly. Eternity is a life after death permanent. So it is you to decide where you have to be. There are two places in eternity. One is heaven, the other one is a hell. So when you finish your race, other one, when, you, when the breath stops in your life, you can never come back anywhere. Only two places. Either go into the eternity of heaven, I go into the eternity of hell. You cannot come back. You cannot talk. You cannot speak this all lies of the devil. Once your life on earth is finished, it is finished forever and ever and ever. And your new life starts in eternity. That's what today the Lord wants to speak to us. If that speaks, there is a quotation in the Bible where that speaks. I wanted to show you from that. If death speaks, what does speak? Amen. Interesting. If the dead speak, what does speak? It'll mind, it'll blow your mind. There are two kinds of voices you can hear. People who are in heaven, they'll say with one voice. People who are in hell, they'll say with one voice. I wanted to show you quickly these two voices and let you decide where you will be this morning. <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Dead spirits will never come to life. Then what the spirit they speak? It is the evil spirits who are available in the atmosphere on this kingdom. They know everything. And they will come in the form of that person whom you are talking about. And they will tell all the stories. I will show you in, a, uh, in Ecclesiastes. Can somebody read for me if somebody can read? Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 5 and 6 For the living know that they will 
die, but can somebody help me come come to the front and uh, 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 read that? But the dead know nothing. But the dead know nothing. That is what it is. Is the Bible tells me, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, and even their name is forgotten. What they're trying to tell you is, dead will never speak. And uh, you see the verse says, never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. That means under the sun means only earth. Under the sun means only earth. That means in the earth, a dead person, either he can come back or live or anything, unless God revives some people. That's what we see three things in the Bible. They came back from death to life, but they never speak on the death. Amen, hallelujah. None of the rest. There's only one person, there's only one quotation in the Bible. You've got to be careful. If God willing, I'll speak to different things on that. Uh, uh, that's a very important thing. Only in 2 Samuel, only in 2 Samuel, that's only time according to the word of God, because the word of God never spoke anything else. That's the only time it is God who gave the permission for Samuel to come up. There's so many theories on that. So my subject is not getting to that. That's only reference in the Bible that they speak that though because God allowed him for different reasons, Samuel came. That's the first thing he said. Why did you disturb me? Amen. Why did you disturb me? You nobody can disturb the death. Dead rather, not death, dead. Okay. And the Bible tells in Isaiah chapter uh, Isaiah chapter 8 verses 19 and 20 you see that who can who can speak the future who can speak the thing it's only God can speak the future amen hallelujah all right Bible tells us very clearly what if the dead could speak what they speak may God open our eyes this morning that our whole perception of life might change by hearing the word of God People of God, please understand, your spiritual life is so valuable. I don't know how God can speak this word to the believers. May God help us this morning. The Bible tells us very clearly, if the dead could speak, they'll speak two things. I mean, they'll speak one thing. Only one thing they'll speak. You know what they speak? If a person in the hell, if he wants to speak, hey! Do whatever you can. Spend whatever you can. Anything you can, you can do that. But do one thing. You should not come to this place. Am I right? If death could speak, they speak this. A person from hell, if God allowed him to speak, he speak only this. God allowed that in one occasion in the Bible, which we are going to see that. And a person in the heaven, if he wants to speak, He'll say one thing, hey, so and so, do anything, but don't miss this place. Because you do if you have anything in this world, and if you don't come to this place, oh, it's terrible, horrible. Amen. With this too, let's continue. Can you turn with me to book of uh, Luke? If you see the passage, Luke 16, okay. You read from the whole thing is there but we don't read all the things we read from 22 25 27 29 30 31 it is on the screen right here so we'll go through that we, because we don't have time so we'll just go as i go where and when we read why we read that okay otherwise we'll uh, uh, we'll just uh, uh, go with the word we know the story very well the rich man lazarus i mean sorry the rich man and eh? Uh, the beggar, a lazar, so poor man, lazar, whatever it is. They both are on the same realm. Whether you're big, whether you're small, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're educated, you're uneducated, talented, no talented, you have one realm to live on. Amen? That is earth. Whoever lives on the earth as a human being, they have to finish the race and go to another realm. There, what you see here is a totally different there. 
Because what you are enjoying on this earth makes no difference when you go to the other side. <coughs> and death is a veil that tears for you to get into that. Amen. Hallelujah. You know the advantage of death. If death is not there, it's a miserable thing. If death is not there, you, you starve for it. If death is not there, there is no eternity for it. If death is not there, there is no accomplishment for your life. Death is so powerful for a person who is born again, baptized and live in the Lord. But death is so horrible for a person if he is not in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So death you got to handle very carefully and we are so casual on that. Amen. Now, I wanted to show you from those passages, keep that passage, Luke chapter 16. Last story. Now, we come to the person. If a person speaks from hell, what would they speak? Hell is a real place. It's not a delusion. It is not an illusion. It is not a story. Hell is a real place. We all believe because we're all Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's no doubt about it. We are not going into that. But at the same time, hell is a place of a eternity also. Amen. Hallelujah. And the first thing what I wanted to show is a person, this, this, this guy, this rich man died and he went into the hell and the poor man Lazarus died. He is in heaven and he's sitting at the right hand of the father Abraham and because this instance has happened before the death and resurrection of Jesus that time the paradise is underworld uh, 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 hell is a real place we all know about it as a Christians but the thing is knowing is not useful if you don't know how to avoid that amen hallelujah Knowledge is important, but knowledge cannot take you unless you implement the knowledge in the right way. Amen. Now we see this Matthew chapter 10, 28. And fear not, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, rather fear them which is able to destroy both soul and the body in hell there's no other person in the bible spoke about hell than jesus there are so many references in hell because my idea is not to uh, 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 you know uh what do you say scare people uh you know what this guy we came all the way to hear some word and he's talking hell if i love you i have to teach this because I love you, I'm teaching this. Because I love you, I'm imparting this revelation into your life. Because I love you. It's not that you give some offering and go, and I'll be happy with that. I will be a cursed person if I don't teach. Isn't it? That's what Paul says. People of God, we don't hear much on, have you ever heard anybody Preaching in uh, hell, very rare, isn't it? Very, very, very rare. I'll come to that last slide. Okay, now the thing is, Matthew, what, what, what he's trying to say is, don't worry for somebody who kills the body, because body is a part of your life, and the body is a way, when you cross that, you'll go into that. that. What I'm trying to emphasize in this place is, God is so clear, especially Jesus, he said, hey, sacrifice anything so that you can't, you, you won't be in hell. Which is a myth for us now. Am I right? Tell us honestly. As, as a person, as forget, keep me as a pastor outside. As a person, what is my conscience today? As a person, what is my perception today? As a person, what my out, outlook today? What's your outlook today? Have you ever cautious of that? Have you been thinking of that at least? We are taking God for granted. Amen. Hallelujah. We are taking salvation for granted. We're taking, it, it is good. I'm not against anything. I'm not against riches. I'm not against, uh, you know, what the blessing the Lord has gives into your life. It is blessed. Uh, God gives every blessing because he says, uh, you, you know, it, it is a portion. I'm not against that. 
But why God gives all these things for only one reason that you can be in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if that you miss it, whatever you do, it makes no sense to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is saying, if anything that costs you, anything that costs you, better you pay so that you won't reach there. You know, that guy is begging. Abraham, Abraham, can, I have five brothers. I have five siblings. Can you send somebody so that they know I'm here? Hey, no, 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 no. Even somebody goes there, they mock at them. Amen, hallelujah. How many times people don't know that they have a help? They do. But how people mock at us? The marketers, hey, come on, man, what are you talking rubbish? Isn't it? So even a, a person, that's the reason God never allows people from the dead to come and speak. Even they speak, you don't believe. Amen, hallelujah. They speak, they'll speak this. Amen, hallelujah. You get me what I'm saying? If they speak, they'll cry to you. If somebody comes in your dream from the hell, they make your life hell, I tell you. They make, you, they make your life hell not because uh, they want you to, they'll cry, they'll beg you, hey, give up everything. You don't know what I'm talking. You don't know what's a pain in that. You don't know what we are going through in that. Hey, my brother, my sister, I plead you, give up. This is a cry. If a person comes from hell, if God gives him two seconds, if God gives him five seconds, if God gives him ten seconds, ten seconds, he'll scream his heart out, he'll scream his lungs out and say, at any cost, please give up. Am I right? Am I right or not? I want church, I want, I want this word to go into your life. I want this word to penetrate into your spirit. Don't take it lightly. You know what Jesus said? If your right eye is troubling you, pluck that out. It's not my words. Words of Jesus. Are you taking serious about it? You can't bend down and pray for a while. You can't just come to the meeting and you just can't go there. You can't even do a minimal thing. Coming to church is a big, please, I'm not accusing. I'm talking to the world today. I'm not talking to people. I'm not keeping anybody in my mind. Please listen. If I think of that, I cannot preach the word of God. I'm not accusing anybody with love. My heart cry to the church of God. Not only the people are sitting here. Not only people are going to listen there. But those people who listen this word. Let the word speak to them in Jesus name. I don't want to mingle and mix the words. Today you don't have time for God. Which is so powerful. Which is so important. Which is so needed for you to keep up your life. Not for anybody. For you yourself. Hell is real. You know what the Bible says? They will hide the price tag of sin. People of God, we got to be careful. If, can I, can I read that? If the right eye offended, pluck it out. If we pluck it out, you don't have body parts, I tell you. If, I, if we pluck out from our life, you don't have, you don't have eye, you don't have hand, you don't have life because every, everything you do is against the will of God. Everything you see against the will of God. Every word you speak against the will. You, you, you have to cut, we have to cut our tongue, we have to take our eye, we have to cut our legs, but still it's work. You go without anything there with your life in it It's still work. It is still work. Oh God, speak this word to your people in Jesus. It is still worth you go into heaven without an eye. It is still worth you go a lame person into the earth, into the heaven. It is still worth. Because you're eternity. And let me clarify you. People won't be lame in heaven.
don't think because I'm preaching people, one-eyed persons will be there in hell and limping people. No, 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 no. God is telling the severity. God is telling the severity. It, because he cannot express more than what else he can tell. Take it out. If you can't, can't control your eye, take out the tongue. If you can't control your eye, cut your tongue off. There's work. I'm, I'm preaching a work message this morning in Jesus' name. I'm preaching a work message. If you hear, hear this word in Jesus' name. Take it out. Pluck it out. It's not me. Jesus said. What Jesus said I'm telling you is including me. No person is better than Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If something troubles you, take it out. It's not in the literal sense. It's not in the literal sense. To tell the severity of hell, God is giving these kind of examples. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What does it mean? Your mind should be always on the things of God. Seek ye first the righteousness. Can, 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 can church say no problem? I'm saying all the time. Can church use the mouths? Amen. What's that? What's that? Seek ye first the, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else, all the things will be given unto you. Every need of you will be met in Jesus' name. But your concentration, your very idea is to listen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Science does not teach anything about afterlife. If anything teaches about afterlife, the book of life. Amen? Amen? Science teaches how to go to Mars. Science teaches how to go to Moon. And science teaches everything. It cannot teach the afterlife. And boys and girls, listen to this. Only Bible can teach you. Only Bible can guard you. Only Spirit can empower you. Amen? Hallelujah? Nothing else. C.S. Lewis, you know C.S. Lewis is a great author and writer and preacher and teacher. He says like this, if at all I have the power to say, for example, I go to the Lord, Lord I'm preaching everything, but Lord give me one permission, that one doctrine I'll take it away. If God gives me that permission, you know what he says? First thing I take out from the, uh, uh, with the permission, if I have the permission, I take out is the hell. But God does not give the right. He did not give the right. You understand what, he, what he's trying to say is? If I have the right to take away, if at all I have to take away one thing, first I take away the doctor of hell so that nobody will go to hell. That's what he's saying. There's no doctrine which I more willingly remove from Christianity if God allows me, that is hell. I want to tell you the severity of our life which you and me are living not knowing what we are doing. Please understand when I say that, I'm also like you. It's not that and I got in me a supernatural power. No. I was like you believer. I was also listening to all the teachings. I also worked like you. What I'm trying to say is your mindset. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God's holy name. This is very fascinating for me. There is no atheist in. Can you read? There is no atheist in hell. The minute they land up there, they'll become believers. Amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful thing that is. There is no atheist. When the minute they come into the hell, oh God, we believe. They read hell. <laughs> My Jesus. Today you're talking about atheism. 
Today I'm talking about all the things that's against the word of God and will of God and things of God. Hey, it is too late for you to, rep to repent and come. Isn't it? First thing you'll say, hey, hell is not a joke. If a person comes from the hell, first thing in your dream you'll say, hey, hell is not a joke. You don't say with my tone, probably you'll say with the tone, your eardrums will fall. There's no atheists in hell. They are the believers. Amen. Hallelujah. And second, say, what you will say? If a person comes out of hell, what he would speak? He speak, there is no second chance. Isn't it? <coughs> if at all you have a second chance, that is on this earth. Once you depart from this earth, there is no second chance. There is no hope. There is no opportunity. There is no repentance. It's only judgment. Am I right? Am I clear? In John you can see that he who believes in the Son has everlasting life and he who does not believe in the Son shall, shall not see life. Amen. Hallelujah. But the wrath of God is ahead. So there is no second chance in hell. I wish there could be. But it's not there. Once it is finished, this life is so important for you and to keep up in a way God wants you to be so that you can live for eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. How many years we are going to live? Can anybody say I live 100 years? Can anybody raise your hands? One person asked like me. Pastor saying. One person asked. Before your death, you should repent. Then the person asked like me. Pastor also pray and tell me when my death comes. Is it? Pray and tell me. Suppose 90 years, then I'll come. If it's 100 years, that day I'll come. No, no, no. Bible says, today, today is the day of salvation. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promises as some understands, you know, uh, uh, slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not waiting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. People of God, there is no second chance in hell. Whatever chances you have, maybe you have second, third, God can give any number of chances, it's only on the earth. Isn't it? Righteous man falls seven, but yet he can raise. Because God is a God of chance only on the earth, not in heaven. Amen? Now, what, what else you can say third? The repentance is urgent. If, if somebody comes in your dream and talks, hey, no, 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 I, okay, you told me. I'll see next week, next month, is it? Repentance is, people have got only one thing I want to do. People who suffer only know the pain of it. I mean, hallelujah. Even, even in this world, we have different problems. Those who go through the problem only, they'll understand what the, their problem is, isn't it? Others, otherwise, we'll say, I, I understand. It is, it is not, I mean, we, 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 we tell them to comfort them, but we don't understand their problem, am I right? Do we? We don't. Only that person understands because the person is going through all he can understand. Yes, we can sympathize them, we can empathize them, we can be with them, but that's all good. I'm not saying that, but still you cannot bear the pain. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the hell is. He says, no time. Immediate. Repent is immediate. You know why repent is immediate? You see that every, every, I, I just saw on small stats, it says, Every year, nearly 60 million people are dying. That means 60 million people are entering into eternity. Where it's a question mark, okay? This all depends. And, and I say eternity, it's a life after death. Okay, and every day, 150,000 people entering into eternity. Every, every hour, 6,000 people Entering into eternity. So by the time I finish my message from beginning to end, 6,000 people already entered eternity. <coughs> One minute, how many? 100 people. One, I, I'm preaching one minute, 100 people entered into it. Where they are? That's what I'm 
and say, it is so urgent my people. Repentance is urgent. If anybody is listening this voice and if you are not repentant, I beg you in Jesus name, right now, you kneel down and say, Lord, touch me. You don't know, next minute is not yours. Next minute is not yours. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's the reason. You know what is repentance? Can you see what is repentance? Repentance is it's more than regret. It's more than sorrow. Yes, repentance, you regret for your sin, you sorrow for the sins, you guilt, all the things. But more than all the things, repentance is change of mind. Amen. Repentance means changing your past life. Repentance means a change in your life, in your attitude, in your mindset, in your walk, in your talk, in your uh, personality, everything. There should be a change. That is what the repentance is. Repentance is not just saying one uh, parrot prayer. And then, how many people have seen that? I, I, I since I don't want to give examples, but uh, you can't even say they're repenting. Let there be outward appearance or the inward appearance. Do you think God will exercise that because you just said a parrot prayer? I'm not against prayer. Please listen to me. A prayer is a required, a sinner's prayer. You know what the prayer? It should come out of your heart. Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. When you feel sorry, your life should change. If you don't see a light change after a person repented, or after a person said, I'm saved, that is not a true salvation. Amen? That is not a true salvation. A true salvation is something that can change. That's what the Bible says in Romans. Sir. Paul said, let this word renew your mind. Amen? Hallelujah. Your mind to be renewed. You've got to be changed. A change is what is repentance. <coughs> a fellowship with God is what is repentance. Amen? Glory be to God. Let's see. I just conclude. We'll see the second one. If a person comes from heaven, what he would say. I'll go briefly. You'll say only one thing. Do whatever. Do whatever that costs you. See to that. You don't miss this place. Heaven is a wonderful place. Filled with glory and grace. Can you, you sing that song? Heaven is a wonderful place. Filled with glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's place. Heaven is a wonderful place. But let me tell you, in heaven also, everybody is not equal. This is a very wrong understanding of the believer. Oh, I'll go to heaven. You know, one, 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 one person said, yeah, why are all these things? If, at least I go to heaven. Even if uh, I have to stand at the, uh, what you call, uh, uh, I have to sit at the, uh, what do you say? A corridor or a, I enter heaven is in it. What if it is if I I if I escape the hellfire is enough? No 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 no. I read so many books. That's what I'm saying. I don't authenticate with all, but Bible tells me your glory differs. Amen. Hey? According to the power that's working in you, you have a different glory, different crown again. There you see somebody in a bangla and you in a poor shed. I'm just giving an example. Yes, pastor's told, tells you. Yes, everybody tells you, but you don't listen. Heaven is not equal to everybody. Take it from me. As I read a lot of books, but I don't want to authenticate from this pulpit. But I believe they are. Because the Bible very clearly tells me all the different illustrations, different places. Heaven is a beautiful place, wonderful places, and God gives a different glory for different believers. Every, every class has got 50 children, all get the same marks. Boys? Girls? Do they get the same marks? No! One gets 100 out of 100, and yet somebody gets possible even one or two or five. Fail is living. 
fail is a different mark, but still people are capable of getting 0, 1, 2, 3, 5 like that. No, it is not same. Same teaching, same lecture, same uh, school, same syllabus, same facility, but results will differ. Amen? Don't be carried away by wrong things. Bible clearly tells me your glory should differ. How your glory should differ? The way you live on the earth, uh, you live in heaven. You can't have a better life in heaven if you don't live a better life for God on this earth. Your life on the earth is directly proportional to the life you are going to have it in heaven. But I keep control of my body. I keep control of my body and bring, and bring it into subjection. Let's say, by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should not be cast away. He used the word beautiful word. Cast away means, you know, throwing. Cast away into the hell. Cast away. I, I love that word, cast away. If we cast away, after preaching to everybody, what if I, if I don't live it? Amen? Everything I count done for the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah? Isn't it? Yeah. Philippians 3, 8. I want to read this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. What it says. What is more, I consider everything I lost because of something worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord for who say I lost all things. Isn't it? Who say I have lost all things. He lost everything because his eyes are open to the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Many times, you know, we say, think of believers, believers, because our eyes are not opening to the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The minute you have that relationship, the minute you come into the presence of God and pray, and God opens eyes and says, Lord, everything is done for me. Everything you give up, I'm not talking myself, but I got, when God touched my life and God showed me, I gave up everything. That doesn't mean that God make us paupers. Amen. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. What you can. Paul is, Paul is, Paul is a wonderful man in the Bible. He's the greatest, uh, you know, apostle and evangelist you could see in the Bible. He's a, he's an orator. He's a, he's a great man of uh, theology and wisdom and knowledge and everything. And that man says, he, he, he did not even say give up. What he, what he said? I consider that. Huh? Dung, you, you know what is dung? Anybody who doesn't know what is dung here? Especially from, from our background? No. You know, dung means you can't even look at it. Isn't it? It smells. You, you run away from that. And you say, all oh, this world is like, oh, we, what Paul, what do you know Paul? If Paul comes and tells, we may tell Paul, do you know what the world is? Do you know what is luxury? Is? You don't know what it is? You don't know Paul, we know everything. We get up in the morning and walk and walk and walk till 12 o'clock in the night. Again, we come 5 o'clock. We go every day. You don't know what is in the world, Paul. You're a fool. And that's what Paul says. I better be a fool for the world than to be a wise man. Amen? People of God, let God speak to you this morning. Let God speak to you. Don't consider your life is granted. And that doesn't mean that God avoids us. That doesn't mean that we can't live in this world. Hope you read the lines in between. I want to conclude with this. People say, God is too good too. How many here you tell me that? Open you tell me. Open you tell me. How many times will I hear this? What people say? Preachers, God is so good that he can't destroy him. Yes, he is. We know that. Then why he preached on hell? Why he had Jesus? It is Jesus preaching on hell than anybody else in the Bible. In the New Testament, it is only Jesus who spoke more times of hell than any apostle. Why? Because he knows the severity of it. Because he knows he is the one who created, but he did not create for you and me. He created for all the demonic people of God. Good. God is too good to allow. Can you ask? A servant of God says, when somebody says like that, ask them, which God is he? 
Because my God, He loves you. My God is a God of holiness, God of separation, God of sanctification, God of obedience, God of everything. And you are talking about that God who is in the Bible or some other God you are introducing. Please question them. If God is too good that He cannot, he cannot uh, send you to hell, ask that person which God you are talking about. It is not Jesus. It is not the Bible. Because you are so used to what? Blessing, blessing, blessing. Because our eyes are blocked with that. Our eyes, our ears are blocked and our eyes are blocked. Because we are hearing what are the people who are preaching. They preach only the prosperity preaching. Blessing preaching, healing preaching, prophecy, this, that. Our ears are all tuned to that. Am I right? How many people come to your houses, talks about the hell? How many people who come in the name of the Lord and talk to you, hey brother, if you are not baptized, baptize right now. Did anyone say that? I'm not here. I travel internationally. I know what I'm talking. It's not that I'm accusing any servant of God. I spoke to the people when I go to different countries. Hey brother, you got to be baptized. This is not the way. We love, with love, with understanding, with, with hope. Because we love them. I'm not accusing anybody. I'm talking to whatever. God. This is where God is love, God is grace. Give love and grace is enough. That's not the gospel. Because we are so used to that. If something helps you here, you say, why this man is preaching like this? You know what? One, one man of God says that it is better to scare people and send them to heaven than pamper them and send them to hell. Hallelujah. It is better to scare people and send them to heaven than pamper them and send them to hell. It is better to wake them up than, you know, snooze them to hell. So I better revive them than lukewarm them. Better you wake them up than snooze them. Better you hurt them than stupid them. We don't want to get hurt in our life. We don't want to hurt. But people of God, I tell you, it is better you hurt and return and come to the Lord and be in heaven than go to hell. Amen. My heart is not preaching on hell. My heart is telling you, my God is not, cre not created hell for you. Jesus never created hell for his people, but because which is a beautiful word, I, I, I conclude with this. You see that? Uh, this year, see that? God has done everything. God has done everything. That's the reason he sent his only begotten son into this world. And we are in this Lent season, 40 days we are talking about it. What is it? Because God loves you so much. Because God invested everything into your life. God wants you. God wants to live with you. So he sacrificed his only son and sent him to this life so that you cannot go to hell. God has done everything. If any person is going to hell, he's going against the will of God. This is what my man says now. If anybody is going to hell, it is against the will of God. If anybody is going to hell, he is going on his work, not Jesus. Jesus loves 